now let us discuss the content of the course uh, in the first half in this course we are going to look at uh, proposition logic and the first order logic followed by application of logic in computer science which will be covered by professor krishna so let's see what is proposition logic which is part of the first uh, part of the course so it deals with propositions as the name suggests for example you may say the shirt is cheap this is one proposition or you can say the shoe is expensive it's up to your choice what propositions are you concerned with but it talks in terms of propositions only infers from the structure over the proposition it doesn't look inside what these propositions may be saying you can say the shirt is cheap and the shoe is expensive you can connect them using some sort of a connectors which we call logical connectors it does not look inside those propositions for example you can say that <clears throat> the shirt is cheap and the shirt is made of gold okay? i mean gold and cheap you may think doesn't go together but that's the fact within inside the propositions we don't look inside the proposition that's why it's called proposition so here's an example. Okay. So example suggest if a if the seed catalog is correct and if seeds are planted in April, then the flowers bloom in July. Flowers do not bloom in July. Therefore, if seeds are planted in April, then the seed catalog is not correct. Think for a minute and try to see if this argument is valid or not. Let's see uh, how you can argue that this argument is valid or not. Okay. So first you turn into propositional form. Okay. You identify all the propositions appearing in this argument. So there are three propositions. One proposition says the seed catalog is correct. Second proposition, the seeds are planted in April. And the third proposition is the, the flowers bloom in July. You can see that the, in the whole of the argument, there is no other proposition that is mentioned. What these individual propositions mean, you don't care. And how they connect, that's all that matters to check the validity of the argument in proposition logic. Let's see. Let's highlight all the occurrences of these propositions. As you see that I have highlighted all the propositions by green and the their connectors by blue and you can also see sometimes you can modify the propositions by the negation saying this proposition is not true so that this can occur within the proposition but that is allowed okay so once you write it down this way and replace all the propositions by their symbols you will end up writing something like this you say if c then if s then f not of f therefore if s then not c now you can ask yourself if this structure is given to me in my argument is this a valid argument or not this is a subject of discussion in next next few lectures and we will go in depth so what we will do first we'll define proposition logic and assign the meaning such that there's no confusion. We saw in the uh, uh, previous video that the earlier attempts caused some confusion. So we need to be very careful and make sure we do not introduce unnecessary anomalies in our reasoning such that we produce an honest argument. Then you assign the meaning. That will be the part of the first week of the work. Then we will see how can we prove some arguments how can we say that certain arguments are valid how can we say certain arguments are not valid all that process needs some sort of formalization we will formalize it and we will show you how you can write proofs using such proofs up to this point uh, that's a mathematician's point of view that key you want to know that if a argument is valid or not but you will find that computer scientist is not happy with this you want to have to understand how difficult it is to write proofs can we write using more concise form can we automate them can we algorithmize them all those questions 
computer scientists will ask. So that will be handled in week three. In the week four, we will be looking at these algorithmization of the proving, you know, correctness of argument or validity of argument turn into a program and see if we can really uh, uh, solve these uh, arguments automatically using computers. And this process is called SAT solve. And we will look at them also. Now let's get make things much more interesting and complex. Something is called first order logic. What is first order logic? You have seen that in proposition logic, we cannot look inside the proposition. But first order logic looks inside the proposition. So you need to sometimes look inside the proposition to make the argument and we'll see example. Actually, we have seen the examples. We will repeat that example again here. It deals with the parameterized proposition. The propositions are not as a black box. It has parameters and you put those parameters and that some parameter values proposition is true for some it is not. These parameters you can quantify and then you can write quantify. You can say some parameter exists and then this proposition is true or sometimes for all parameters something is true. So these are the two kinds of quantifiers you can talk about. So the two things were introduced, a parameterized propositions and quantifiers. Using these two, you can actually write a lot of interesting math. And uh, let's look at an example. We have seen this example before. Humans are mortal. Uh, Socrates is a human. Therefore, Socrates is mortal. Let's see how can we write this argument in a symbolic form or some formal form so let's see so we had this proposition uh, something is human socrates is a human so we can say that this is an x and is a human is a proper parameter proposition and you can put the value of x then it you know the truth value if you put a chair here then it will not be true if some human you put as a parameter let's say socrates it will be true now the second X is mortal, so if I either may be X is mortal or X is not mortal, depending on what value of X you put in this M of X, uh, you get true or false. And then you also need to have symbols for individuals, you know, like Socrates S. Now, if you have these three symbols, okay, two are parameterized propositions, and there's one is for individual, you can symbolize your argument the way you have, we have done for the proposition logic. How do we do that? So here is the outcome. Okay, so we'll say in the first statement when we say humans are mortal, we can say that for all x, okay, if x is human, then you have m x. That means x is mortal. We know if we put Socrates in this human uh, predicate, you get true. So that means you write this. That argument says, therefore, I can conclude that M of S. Okay, so that's a symbolic form of the argument. We will study that how can we write uh, such symbolic arguments, uh, and then how can we check its validity using some algorithm, some proof system, the way we have been doing for proposition logic. One thing to note here is the first order logic is not the most general logic. There is more complex logic we will not get into that in this course uh, maybe in the krishna's half second half we will discuss some part of it but remember that there are some part of mathematics and certain kind of arguments cannot be expressed in first order logic now we're going to add something extra on first order logic which is called logical theory what is logical theories you see in the case of first order logic it is unaware of the outside world it doesn't know mathematics it doesn't know uh, what is uh, who you are and it has since it has lack of any such knowledge it cannot talk about numbers it cannot talk about theorems like Pythagoras theorem it doesn't know geometry so if you want to talk about those subject matters you need to bring in the assumption of those subject matter here's an example Let's suppose you want to talk about natural numbers. It includes symbols like 0, 1, less than, plus, and multiplication. First order logic doesn't understand them. If you write them as a first order logic formals using these symbols, 
it wouldn't know what to do with them okay so here is an example okay so let's suppose you write this formula so this what this formula says for all x we pick a number there exists a p which is greater than x okay such that if you for all numbers v1 v2 both are greater than one if you multiply them then that are they are not equal to p that means p is a prime number so for every number there is a bigger prime number this is the what interpretation you get when you look at this formula but when the first order logic look at it it doesn't know what this means it doesn't know what this means it doesn't know uh, what multiplication means so you need to provide the meaning of those symbols and those are called axioms until you add those axioms it won't understand this formula so we will see how we can introduce these kind of assumptions or axioms in our system and prove these kind of properties on the, on the some specific subject matter logic theories are useful for studying specialized domains and logic was thought to be an immensely useful general purpose tool in studying properties of various mathematical domains however it turns out you can prove a theorem like this which is proven by Gödel in 1930 which says that uh, there are theories whose assumption cannot be listed okay? so there is a subject matter out there you cannot come up with a list which just exactly descri describe what the matter is okay and that theory happens to be the number theory number theory means plus multiplication and all the natural symbols and uh, greater than less than sign then you can say that this exact set of assumptions of this theory cannot be listed the, the problem comes is this as remember that i said the self-reference is the problem you can construct a sentence something like this this sentence cannot be proven by the list if you choose a list of assumptions you can construct a mathematical statement which itself says that you cannot prove by from the list if that construction is possible then you have a weird situation It'll, for any given list there is always a statement that is true in the theory but cannot be implied by those, uh, those set of statements so, so this is a very sad news for us it tells us there is a huge space of problems cannot be solved using logic or mathematics or something when this problem was hit upon people were very very disappointed that how come mathematics is some sort of incomplete in some sense but eventually it was realized that uh, there's the computers is the key you know if you can solve in a finite amount of time using computers then then it's good if you cannot solve the problem using computers in a finite time then the then even if you mathematically define the problem was the point you can't really solve that problem in real world so then that will become clear in this course and when you do the automata theory course and all those ideas put together it will very become clear by the end of these two courses that what is being stated here so we after the week four when we will done for propositional logic we will study first order logic and define it and uh, basically try to understand what what how exactly first order logic is being into, uh, being defined and interpreted then we discuss the proof system and uh, followed by a theorem prover and we in the, in the same week at by the end we will also look at some of the theories but that will bring us to the midterm of the course